Companies are heading to and what we like to call interchangeably with virtualization is a cloud-like infrastructure. So to do that, you really need the, three, the four stages. One is you go through the stage of just understanding what it is. Two is you start deploying the technology. Three is you start standardizing processes so you can have automation take over for a lot of manual, rep repetitious, wasteful activities. And the four stage is really the automation part that really gets to that point of having this private cloud. There's two hurdles to, yeah. to that happening. The first one is the, the human aspect of it and just the fact that getting people away from being artisans within their company and being, I can do it myself and no one, the company can't exist without me and getting them to actually, you know, write down what they do and, and start to standardize on the way things are done consistently that an operation is done and, and can be checked. And so that's, you know, so you have the people part of that is kind of the first hurdle of getting someone to actually write it down and being consistent and setting up guidelines and really analyzing what happens from end to end and then saying this could be a repetitious type of activity. So for example, if you want to hook up a new PC, you're going to have to be able to open up a port, apply an IP address, maybe some security profiles. Typically, it's all manually done, but that can actually all be done in an automated way. Now the second hurdle to actually uh, enabling that to happen, so you have the people, but now is also the fact that the technology hasn't been there. There hasn't been traditionally the tools to automate it. So and what we consider that to be is kind of this um, infrastructure that's this closed loop one. One is to monitor what's going on, and two is to have these configura configuration changes happen automatically. So if there's a change within a certain variables, then the auto configuration system goes and changes the hardware to accommodate the changes that are occurring within the infrastructure. Typically today, a VM move from one to another, you hear like milliseconds, you hear minutes. That's not the case. It actually takes on average about two days right now. Why? Someone puts a ticket in, and the engineer, networking engineer, administrator gets it. By the time they get halfway through their email for the day, they see it. They go and they maybe do their five minutes worth of work. They don't log it in until the end of the day. Well, you still need a check from the storage to make sure the connection's still there. You still need a check from the security. You still need to check from the application. So the ticket still needs to go through multiple people. So by the time it gets closed out by everybody, you know, then your VM is moved from one area to another. Because the reality is that infrastructure and that networking piece, the policies that need to change from one switch to another have to be CLI'd in because it's not automated. There isn't, you know, this automation tool that can go and look at an application and set the the automatic parameters from the server storage area all the way out to the user, whether it be through firewalls, whether it be through WAN optimization, whether it be through routers and switches, everything is still manually done and changes, moves, and ads are done that way today. And so that's where this frustration is with CIOs is they haven't gotten the efficiency gains out of all this billions of dollars being spent on consolidation. With the same amount of resources, you cannot you know, be able to offer a whole new set of services to something that's very fluid and dynamic. You need to have this infrastructure that can do that itself. Now to do that is you need to have this underlying part that, that can be able to automate and be able to adjust automatically to the needs of the, of the organization. And so that's why this type of automation needs to start to occur within there. So you can take the resources that typically have dealt with this very static environment has made changes as needed and it takes two days, maybe up to a week to get a PC. That's not acceptable in this new new environment. We need to have those people who are those engineers take it up a level and have this service orchestration to allow this hardware to automatically react and, and coordinate the services to each of the individual people out there to be able to embed themselves in their customers' lives and offer those you know, uh, specialized products and services that everybody wants out there. Now the business, if they don't implement this infrastructure and this automated self-service infrastructure itself, they're not going to be able to get ahead of their competitors and they will wither and die as their competitors are able to deliver more products that are customized for their end user. So that end user will be with that customer, I mean will be with that company in the end because they, they know that company can deliver exactly what that customer wants at any, any point. And the best way to think about it is Harley-Davidson, Starbucks, Burger King, have it your way. That's the consumer world, but also applies to the business world. You look at Walmart, their vendors are embedded within their business itself. Something comes off the shelf, their vendors know that day that the detergent is missing off, is gone from the shelf, and they're ready to re replenish it because they're part of, embedded inside that business itself. Understanding what, what's at the, the port level, what device is there, applying an IP address, and starting to automate a lot of the functionality that's typically been very manually intense 
very repetitious and always a one-off, which is highly inefficient. It's not doesn't fall into the lean principles that you see in manufacturing as, as as per se. And those lean principles are going into IT where you expect this repetitious type of activity to be, to be taken over by an automated type of infrastructure. And that leans right into what the business world expects is to break functionality down, have a lower cost resource applied to it, and yet at the same time automate things that humans don't need to be doing.